Welcome to LAFE TV. I'm Carrie Logue, LAFE's Executive Director. Today you'll learn a ton about baking with Chef Ollie. I'm sure you'll love this episode and create something delicious. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Risu Restaurant, which is opening soon in downtown Long Beach. We greatly appreciate your support for our teacher in developing this lesson. Our Summer Enrichment Institute has gone virtual with registration opening on April 30th. We hope to see you online this summer for some awesome enrichment and educational opportunities. All right, take it away, Chef Ollie. chocolate for breakfast and it is also inspired from an article in NPR from the salt on how to bake the perfect chocolate chip cookie. So we're going to start first by going to go wash our hands. We'll be back in a few. How would you describe the perfect chocolate chip cookie? Do you like it crunchy or chewy or crispy? Mm. Yep. In my opinion, I like chewy. Me too. Actually. Me too. I'm big on chewy. So getting that texture is actually science. And the first way that we start to ensure that we get a chewy texture is by creaming the butter and sugar. So creaming is where you're, you're actually taking two chemicals that don't mix well together. It's almost like oil and water. And you're forcing them by mixing them really, really fast together. So, how are you feeling right now? Let me see your muscles. Oh yeah, and can you go fast? Yeah. All right, yeah. so choose your weapon if you wanna have a whisk. Mm -hmm. If you wanna have a paddle. Whisk. We're gonna start you off in this bowl. The butter needs to be soft. Um, some recipes will, will call for a melted butter, but is room temperature is ideal. So with your clean hands, I'm going to ask you to unwrap the butters. There's two sticks here. And you're going to put them in your bowl for your wet ingredients. Then we're just going to go ahead and mix out or measure out the rest of the ingredients and get to work. creaming the butter and the sugar. Um, you could also do this in an electric mixer or you could use a paddle. The whisk, it kind of gets too stuck up inside of it. But basically, you are the machine. And so think of how like an electric mixer would work. The bowl would be going in a circle and then the paddle would be coming down. And I'm just smashing the butter into the sugar. And you don't want to be able to tell the difference between the two at the end. Okay, we are now gonna do the job that every, every kid loves that I've ever met, and that's cracking eggs. Okay, so there's only two eggs here. 
So if you have two kids, please let them do the cracking. Um, we want to avoid getting any shell into our cookies, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we might want some crunchy things in our cookies, but not eggshells, right? Mm -mm. No. Okay, so a lot of times people will say to crack right here and then go into the bowl, but actually then if I had any shell, it would be going directly into my other ingredients. So I like to crack into a bowl first, that way if I need to fish anything out, I can do that, right? Mm -hmm. Also, I don't like to crack on the side of the bowl, I just crack on the counter. And then I open up the egg. Nice. Ooh, shell goes in here. It's pretty. Hmm. So close. Yep, upside down. There you go. Yeah, it's going to take a little longer. <laughs> it feels a little weird. And then just have something set up for you to put your shell in. Oh, we still have a yolk inside of theirs. <laughs> Great. All right, I'm going to get an elbow five. Good. Okay, now we have raw egg on our hands, so we're going to go wash our hands. Okay. All right, we're back. Fresh, clean hands. And now we're going to be adding the egg. The egg, they suggest that you add them one at a time. We'll just do our best. Try to do one yolk at a time, but if the whole thing goes in, it's not a big deal. They're and close together. They are close together. Hmm. Yeah. There we go. Looks great job. I'm going to do the next one. So they suggest doing them one at a time so that I would mix all of this so that it's incorporated, meaning you can't tell the egg from the rest of the stuff. It's all mixed in, and then you add the rest of the egg. Do you want to switch with me? Mm -hmm. Do you want to give it a whirl? No? Okay. Had enough? Do you want to turn the bowl for me? Okay. How does it smell? It smells kind of sugary and mm -hmm. a little achy. Yeah. So we always want to use our five senses when we're cooking. If at this point the egg smelled like not eggy, but like not a good eggy, it's not going to get better when you cook it. What about eating raw cookie dough? Mm-mm. Mm-mm is right. Um, egg poisoning? I don't know. So um, salmonella can be present in eggs. It's pretty rare. But actually, the biggest culprit in getting sick from cookie dough is flour. Why do you think it's flour? I don't know. Okay, so do you know how flour grows? Not like flowers, flowers, but like the wheat flour that we're using today? Uh, like this kind of flour? Wheat. Uh-huh. And those grow in fields, right? Mm -hmm. And then what kind of animals live in fields? Fields. Hmm. I feel like I remember like you know, something that eats grass. So maybe cows? I well, I haven't seen cows in wheat fields, but I have heard of the field mouse. Mice, rats, oh. rodents. Bunnies um, and poo poo. So, yeah. All those things can be present on flour, also, where it's stored, um, same kind of situation. So, you want to make sure that flour is always fully cooked. Okay, he's a pro already. All right, we were well incorporated, so now we're doing the egg again. Thank you. Good. I think these are probably going to be some of the best cookies I've ever had. Okay, so you want to make sure to scrape the sides as you're going. I'm going to give it a final mix. Okay. I'm going to get you your scissors. Doing great. All right, so our fabulous director and filmographer, Sasha, Farmer Sasha, from Farm Lot 59, Farm Sam 59, you please pan over to our recipe. So if you'll notice, we have made some modifications on the recipe. Um, it calls for these specific chocolate chips. You'll see what we did there. Um, for the walnuts, I tend to just avoid nuts in general um, when I'm cooking with kids, especially at the schools. Um, you're welcome to add nuts, but it's not going to change the recipe at all if you don't have it in there. All right, so we did everything here. Something that's not in their recipe is that um, you need to refrigerate it for like an hour or half an hour, and that will allow everything to set up and we kind of like a firmer cookie. If you look at the 
NPR, the science behind baking your ideal chocolate chip cookie, they'll show you that um, the longer you refrigerate, like the kind of higher stacked cookie you get. Okay? All right, let's go back to Nalu. Oh, yeah. So I like to have two bowls, one for dry ingredients and one for wet ingredients. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, at this point, we have all of our wet ingredients combined except for the vanilla. So some notes about vanilla. Um, you can use vanilla extract. You can make your own vanilla extract by putting vanilla bean inside of bourbon or even vodka. Um, this, you want to get this off? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is that is a like happy a, smell? It's pretty thick. And it has like all the beans in it. Calls for a tablespoon. If you do not like vanilla, you wouldn't add this. Um, you can work with other extracts. Look at all those little beans in there. This thing is a great value for, for you get so much bean for your buck. Yeah, oh wow is right. We're gonna save this for coffee or something else, okay? You wanna go ahead and give that a mix, please? Thank you. At this point, we're ready to add our dry ingredients once that's mixed up. And this is salt, the baking soda, and the flour. And then, Nalu has chosen some very delicious chocolate chips. Now, on this recipe, it's like 10 ounces of this, 11 ounces of this, 12 ounces of it, and they're all very specific, um, especially those guitar super chips. Okay, I mean, I did get some guitar from my pantry. They're not the super chips. What I've always done is just done three bags. Um, some people feel that's too much chocolate. I think that that statement is ridiculous. If you want less chocolate, you know what to do. Do like a half a bag each. I don't know, play with it. Make your own perfect cookie. Looks so good. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit at a time here, just so it doesn't turn into a flour bomb. Okay. Make sure to scrape the sides. That's a lot of flour. It is a lot of flour. Two and one fourth cup, to be exact. I really love the selection that Nalu made here because we're going to have a lot of flavors. Um, I didn't have a lot of variety in terms of like texture and everything. You know, there's some of those like big square chips you could use. But we're going to have white chocolate chips, milk chocolate, and a semi-sweet. Great technique. Always just let me know if you need a break, okay? Mm -hmm. What does it smell like? Cookie. Cookie, yes, and that's what we're making. If this smelled like liver and onions, we'd have a problem. I feel like we need to back up. Uh, one of the reasons I'm always like checking for smelling and stuff too is because it can be easy to forget an ingredient. Even, I don't know if you missed everything out, maybe you just forgot it. Um, so when you're smelling you're like, oh wait, it doesn't smell sweet at all or it doesn't smell like vanilla, that will let you know that you might have forgotten an ingredient. One time I made these and I forgot the flour. They were gluten free. <laughs> if you wanted to make these cookies like actually gluten free at home and they would still be cookies, um, you could use uh, gluten-free flour and it's the same ratio. Another option is to make it dairy-free. Um, you would just be omitting the butter and with the same measurement, you could do coconut oil. Again, that's gonna change the flavor a lot, but um, there is a butter-flavored coconut manna. Yeah, that I have not played with yet, but please let me know if you do. Chocolate and um, coconut taste pretty good together. I don't see how that could be bad. Hmm. Are you okay. checking for air pockets? Yeah. Pro move, man. Things. You're amazing. So just make sure you scrape those sides here with your scraper. Perfect. And I'm sorry to do this to you. It's the best. <laughs> Let me know if you need to take a break, okay? Okay. All right.
Hi there, so we've had this in the freezer for a half hour. It's a little bit of a cheat because technically you're supposed to have it, I mean, you could do even overnight to have like a really nice stacked cookie. Nice. Um, but we just did a little cheat instead of the hour minimum, we did half an hour in the freezer. Look good? Mm -hmm. All right, let's roll them out. We are using a cookie scoop, um, small, medium, and large. Nalu has made the executive choice to do minis. What's so nice about minis is that he will get his cookies faster because they will cook faster. All right, so do you want me to show you how to do this? Have you done this before? There you go. Never mind. Huh? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, that's hard. Really, it's very hard because it was where? Freezer. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to help? Yeah. Eh. Uh, hmm, you've got like three chocolate chips there. Let me show you how this is done. Right. So you scoop by taking, and it could be like a chunky scoop too. Okay, you don't have to level off here. And then just if you go over like I did, you might want to like form a little bit with your hand and then pat on top. And that's going to be a delicious mini cookie. Okay, did you see how like I really got in there and mm -hmm. I scooped under? So you're dipping just the top in and you need to think of it as like a scoop. Like, have you ever scooped melon? What? Have you ever done like a melon ball? Melon? What's that? Well, I'm gonna guess that's a no. But when you that is the, not a no. <laughs> when, it, <laughs> when you do a melon, it's like you want to scoop the whole thing. See, it's like okay. I think the better way to describe it is like you see how I made a hole. You want to go like in a circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not like scooping up a little spoonful. It's like you're doing a full circle. Okay. Kabish. Beautiful. And I like your spacing too, because they're gonna cook out and go. Wait. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, really and nice. then you retreated. <laughs> oh, okay, you're gonna twist. There's nothing on the scoop right now. <laughs> Boy, there's something. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Wow. You okay? Looks pretty good. I think you could get a little more in there. Like there's this part sitting up there from. There you go. All right, we're gonna scoop these out and we will be right back. All right, so we have our cookies um, all measured out. We're doing minis, so they're gonna cook a lot faster than this recipe. And um, we have it preheated at 375. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Nalu. We're gonna put those in right now. Probably gonna check on them about every five minutes because they're so little. Be back in a few. cookies will turn out delicious. Thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode and thank you to Chef Ollie for bringing the lesson to us. We bring you these episodes to bring some fun and joy into your home during this time of school closures. And I do want to let you know that for now we will be going until episode 30 and then taking a hiatus for Life TV. So we're so glad that you've been a part of this journey and we've had so much fun doing it. So this was episode 28. We've got two more to come and we hope you'll tune in then and even go back and watch a lot of our awesome episodes and learn some new things over again or get better at the skills that have been presented. So thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Bye.